Hi guys and welcome to another video. This video shows how to install macOS Catalina, Mojave or High Sierra as a KVM virtual machine on an Unraid server. Oh yes, and this is the easiest it's been so far. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So, it's now autumn 2019, or as you guys in the States would say, it's fall. And so Apple have released yet another flavour of Mac OS, and this year it's Catalina. And thank goodness this version's a bit easier to pronounce. Last year when the beta of Mojave came out, when I first read it, I thought it said Mojav. And come on, I'm sure I wasn't the only one out there who thought that was how it was pronounced, because me living over in the UK, I'd never actually heard of the Mojave Desert in southeastern California. Well, I'm going to stop rambling on now because I think I'm making myself sound really ignorant. Okay, so for the last few years, I've always made a new video about how to install Mac OS as a KVM virtual machine on an Unraid server. And this year, I'm going to do the same, but with one big exception. This year, I'm going to show you how to install it in a really super, super easy way. It's almost going to be just a point and click installation and I think it's easier to install Mac OS than it is to install Windows 10. Because this year when we install Mac OS we're not going to need any install media, we're not going to have to be bothering with editing XML files. Basically everything's going to be super easy, well hopefully. So how is that you may ask? So over the last few weeks I've been working on my first container for Unraid and it's just hit community applications. The container, it's called Mac in a Box, and it's super easy to use. Now what this container does, is it basically installs Mac OS Catalina, Mojave, or High Sierra as a KVM virtual machine on your Unraid server. And no, the container doesn't run Mac OS itself. Rather, the container is a tool, which when run, installs the VM just as a normal VM on the server, it just sets everything up for you. So how does the container work and what does it actually do? So to answer that, I'm going to head across to community applications and download the container onto my server. So do a search for Mac in a box. Okay, so click on the downward arrow here to install and that will bring you straight into the template. Okay, so there's a few things inside the template which we can change. First here where it says choose Mac OS version, here we can choose from High Sierra Mojave or Catalina. So whatever you choose here, the container will download directly from the Apple servers the install media needed to install that macOS version. Okay, let's just stop a minute for a little disclaimer. Now you really shouldn't use a macOS VM on hardware that isn't Apple. Now some people will be running their Linux servers on Apple hardware, and maybe they'd still like to be able to run their native OS. And in that use case, it's 100% fine. So we start moving into a bit of a grey area when running this on non-Apple hardware. And you're taking the same risks that someone would be if using a Hackintosh. So I'd suggest anyone running a Mac OS VM to only run it if you do actually own Apple hardware. Now I've had a whole bunch of laptops that I've dropped and spilt beer on etc over the years. So I've given Apple a whole bunch of money. But if you're going to install it and you don't own any Apple hardware at all, well I can't stop you. But I just want to say, I take no liability for what you do. So basically anyone who's using this container, you're doing so at your own risk. So with that warning out the way, let's move on. And I'm choosing Catalina here for my Mac OS. So next here is the path where the VM images location is. And for most people that's going to be what it is here, which is the default location, which is forward slash MNT, forward slash user, forward slash domains. So only change this location if you store your VMs in a non-standard location, such as an unassigned SSD. Okay, so the next location here, the XML location, again you're not going to have to change this, this is the default location of where Unraid stores the VM XML templates. And this is used in this container, so it can send a pre-configured XML template straight into the VM manager. Now one important thing to note 
is the pre-configured XML files that this container creates assume that your VMs are stored in the default location above, as they will be referencing this location. And so that brings us to this next part here. Here you can choose Full Install or Prepare Install. Now leaving this setting on Full Install is by far the easiest way to use the container and most people should leave it on Full Install. So what Full Install will do is, it will make a folder in your VM location for this VM and then inside of that it will create a vDisk to which macOS will be installed. It will then place the downloaded macOS install media into the same place along with a Clover image which as of this video is 5097 and to get these newer Clover images to run we must use custom OVMF files as the stock ones in Unraid are not compatible. Now the container it doesn't replace the stock Unraid OVMF files but rather it places some in the same folder as the install media etc which are then only used by the macOS VM so it doesn't change anything on the server. So finally it moves a pre-configured VM XML template straight into the VM manager which references all of those files so it's just ready to click start and fire up the VM. So what prepare install does is similar to above but it puts all of those files into the Mac in a box app data folder on your server so you can use them for a manual install yourself. However for this video I'm leaving mine on full install because that's the easiest method. Ok so next, so here you put the size of the VDisk that you want to have the install go on to, by default it's on 64 gigs, and here you can choose whether the VDisk created is a QCOW2 or a RAW image. But one thing just to note is on prepare install, if you're installing manually, then no VDisk is actually created, so these settings have no effect. Ok so that's how to fill in the template, so let's hit apply and pull down the container. So once it's done let's head on over to the docker tab and we can see that the container is running. Now there's no web UI for this container, well in fact if you click on web UI it will actually go to this video. So to see what's going on inside the container we just click onto the log button on the right hand side. Ok so the first thing you can see is the time when the process is starting, followed by the type of recovery media that it's downloading and you can see here it says it's downloading the Catalina recovery media and in some cases this can take quite a long time. It depends on your internet speed and also how busy the servers are. Because yes the container downloads the recovery media directly from the Apple servers by leveraging Foxlet's excellent Python script to do so. So the container itself doesn't actually contain any images at all. And this number here is the product ID for the flavour of macOS that you're installing. So just remember that this part can sometimes take quite a long time depending on various different circumstances. So after the downloads complete, using Volta's DMG to IMG program, the DMG image is converted to a usable image which we can use on the server. Then the container creates a VDisk which we specified in the template to install the image onto. Well in fact at the bottom we can see a summary of what's been done. We can see that the install media was put into the default VM location which we had specified in the template, into a folder here for me called Mac in a Box Catalina, a 64 gig raw VDisk was put in the same location, also put there is a Clover image, the custom OVMF files are put in a subfolder OVMF, and finally the XML file for the VM has been put in the correct location. Now one thing to note with the VM XML files that are created by this container, all of the locations in the XML file assume that your VMs are kept in the domain share. Now if yours aren't kept there, you will have to manually change the locations to reflect that. But for most people, these XML files will work straight out the box. Ok so other than just seeing what time the process finished, you'll see a message that says that we need to stop the array and restart it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So after you've stopped and restarted the array, the VM will become visible under the VMs tab. So just select it and click start and then open the VNC viewer. And that will bring us straight into a Clover boot screen. So just hit enter here and the Apple logo will come up and the progress bar go across. Now of course this is sped up. Then we're going to come to the macOS utilities page and here we want to go to disk utility because we need to format the drive. 
Now you'll see three drives here and you'll know which one to format because it'll be the largest one. So select it, then click Arrays, give the hard drive a name, I'm going to call mine Catalina. Choose the file system which you're going to format the drive in, I'm going to leave mine on Mac OS Extended. Then just click on Arrays. So once the drive is formatted, click Done and then Close Disk Utility. And next we just want to just click on to reinstall Mac OS and then click Continue. Click on to Agree and again. And now we just select our hard drive we just formatted and click on to Install. Now again this part is dependent on our internet connection and how busy the Apple servers are. Because now it's downloading the full operating system not just the recovery media like what was downloaded earlier. Now I have seen this stage actually take over an hour before so you might want to just go and do something else and come back to this later. So you'll find the VM will restart and then eventually you'll come to this welcome screen. So select your region. Then just go through the other bits and pieces in the setup process until you come to the main screen. And we're done. We have a VM running Mac OS Catalina. So I'll quickly just test the internet and check that's all working. Okay cool, so that's all good. So we've got a fully working VM. Now of course it only has VNC graphics, which you connect to from the web UI in Unraid. However a better solution is to use the free Splashtop Desktop Personal, which will also give you sound as well. So to make the template as compatible as possible for pretty much everyone, I made the CPU count to only have two virtual CPUs and four gigs of RAM. So after you've finished installing the VM, you can actually change this. But unfortunately, it isn't just as straightforward as making the changes in the template manager. There's another step that we have to do as well. So before making any changes in this template, we need to go across onto Form View and scroll down to the bottom of the template. Now there's some custom XML here that if we don't have this, so we need to copy this from line 136 down and then switch back onto the XML view and now we can make all of the changes that we want to in the template. And then scroll down to the bottom. And if you wanted to pass through a graphics card, you could do that here. For Mojave and upwards, you're going to need an AMD graphics card, but for High Sierra, you could use an Nvidia card. So once you've got everything set how you want to, just click on to update. And then go back and click edit again. Now click back to form view, scroll right down to the bottom, and on the very bottom line where it says Domain, let's delete that and then paste what we had onto the clipboard, the custom XML. Now before you go and press Update, there's just one other thing we need to change. So let's go back up and here, this part here is the network interface. We don't want to use Vert.io and we can change this to E1000-82545EM. Once you've done that, that's all you need to do. Just click on to Update. Oh, but you can see I've actually lost the icon here. So if you want the icon to come back, then we just need to edit the XML again. Now this really isn't important to have the correct icon. Just where it says icon, we just put the location of where the icon is. And for Catalina, it's forward slash MNT, forward slash user, forward slash domains, forward slash Mac in a box Catalina, forward slash icon, forward slash Catalina dot PNG. And if this was Mojave, it would be Mac in a box Mojave, forward slash icon, forward slash Mojave.png. And obviously High Sierra, Mac in a box High Sierra, forward slash icon, forward slash High Sierra.png. Okay, so there's the icon back again. Now, when I start up this VM, I'm going to get an error. And I just wanted to show you that before actually fixing it. And when it starts to boot, Nothing's actually happening. So let's close this off and force stop the VM. Now the reason is I've given this VM 20 CPUs. And because of this odd number of CPUs, the VM isn't going to work. So if we gave it four CPUs or I think even eight, it will work fine. But something like six, 10 or 20 is just not gonna work. So what we can do to fix that is edit the XML again. And we wanna scroll down Here's where all the CPUs are added. We want to go down a little bit further until we come to this part here where it says CPU mode equals host pass through. And there's a line here called topology. If we remove this line and then click update, now we'll better start the VM and it will work fine. 
and we can see it booting and we're back onto the desktop. So that's the basic setup of the VM. In a future video I'll be looking at more advanced things in to do with setting up a Mac OS VM. But to wrap this up, let's just talk about a couple of other things in to do with this container. Ok so removing the VM, if we click here and we go remove VM and we click yes to remove, we get this error here saying it cannot undefined domain with NVRAM. So what we have to do is to edit the VM template, go on to XML view and we just want to go down to where we see here the line that begins with NVRAM and just remove that line, click on to update and now we can remove the VM fine. Ok so next, so if we start editing the template and we just change a lot of random things and we wish we hadn't done that because we haven't actually saved any of the XML. If we want to bring this template back all we have to do is to remove it just like we did with the other template a moment ago. Now let's go back to the docker tab and go to the Mac in a box template and I want to restore Mojave so I'm going to click onto that and I'm going to click on to apply and done. And if we look at the log here, we can see here a different summary of what's happened. So because the media already existed, it doesn't download it again. There's already a VDisk image here, so it's not going to overwrite it, it's going to skip that. But because it couldn't see a VM template, it's moved one to the server. When a container runs, it will always update the Clover image here. And it will always put in the OVMF files. I thought this could be useful in case we ever want to update Clover, we can do it through the docker container. So now I'm going to close this and if I go back to the VMs tab, we can see that the VMs not here and that's because we need to again stop the array and start it back up again and when we go back to the VMs tab, there's Mojave back again and I'll be able to start it up as the template's been restored. Ok so that's it for this video. I really hope that you found the video and the container useful. Now a big shout out to all of my patrons and supporters. Thank you guys so much for enabling me to keep making these videos and doing what I really enjoy. Now if anyone wants to join this great bunch of people then you can find links in the description. And I'd just like to ask if you like this video then please hit the like button, subscribe and share this video. It really helps me on YouTube. Anyway guys it's late here and it's time for me to go, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.